Riders, ridettes, and pillions, welcome. Today is the fifth and final day of my journey through beautiful Western Colorado on my 2019 Triumph Speed Twin. I've made one video out of each day of this trip so far, so if you haven't seen those yet, I recommend getting caught up. Today's installment won't be quite as exciting as the rest uh, because I'm pretty much just heading straight for home. About 400 miles across the state from Grand Junction to Longmont. But I thought this would be the right time to reflect on this trip and answer some of the questions that I had going into it. Chief among them, is the Triumph Speed Twin a good touring bike? But before I get to the bike itself, I'm going to talk about what I've learned about motorcycle touring in general this past weekend, as well as some things that I might do differently next time. Let's get started. So to summarize this trip so far, I left Longmont, Colorado on Thursday, September 17th and rode to Monarch, specifically the Monarch Mountain Lodge. On my way there, I rode through Clear Creek, Route 6, uh, a brief hop on 70, went through Loveland Pass, and then down through Breckenridge. That day was about 210 miles. The second day, I went from Monarch along Route 50 past Gunnison. Uh, went up the Black Canyon of the Gunnison a little ways and turned around and came back and then took 550 south to Silverton. That day was roughly the same length. Uh, it was about 230 miles, I think. The next morning I left Silverton and my original plan was to head straight north to Grand Junction, but I ended up swinging way out to the west to visit the Utah border and then went from there to Grand Junction via 141 Gateway Canyon, or at least I think it's called Gateway Canyon, I'm still not sure. I had originally planned on taking a long day ride during my layover in Grand Junction, but I actually covered the places I was going to go when I made that detour the previous day. So I gave myself a chill day yesterday and just rode up to the Colorado National Monument in the evening. And now today my only mission is really to make it home. I don't have any sightseeing planned. I'm going to be stopping as little as possible between here and Longmont. I learned pretty early on on my first day of riding that I have a tendency to stop at basically every scenic overlook I come across. I can't just let it go, you know? I can't just ride past and go, wow, and move on. I, I can't help myself. I have to stop and get the camera out and usually get the drone out too. And I'm really happy and proud of some of the footage I've captured. It just means that it takes me so much longer to get anywhere. You know, when I look up the route that I'm going on Google Maps, I'm finding that I need to add at least 50% to the travel time. So if I map out a route and Google says it's gonna take me four hours, it's really gonna take me at least six. So what I have found that means for this trip is that I get tired faster. It takes a lot of energy to just be stopping and getting off the bike and taking my backpack off, taking my gloves off. Uh, let's say I'm gonna get the drone out. I gotta unfold all the little legs and then I have to unfold the controller. And then the freaking drone always needs to have its compass calibrated. And I'm standing there crouched over, spinning in circles like a moron. And let's say I wanna get a flyby. Uh, you've seen a couple of those in these videos. That means I have to stop set the camera up, ride away from it, turn around, ride past it, turn around again, ride back to it, stop, pick it up again, and doing any of that 10 times in a day is just a lot. So it costs me not only time, but also stamina. And I've found that in a lot of these scenic areas of Colorado that I'm riding through, they have a tendency of escalating things as you ride through them. They start out and it's like, wow, that's unique and beautiful. And then as you keep going, whatever you liked about it at first just gets amped up. The, the cliffs get taller and bigger. The mountains get more extreme and snowier. The roads get twistier as you go along. And so as I'm riding along, my time and patience and stamina are going down, but the beauty and excitement of what I'm seeing and doing is going up. And what that means is that by the end of some of these areas I've ridden through, I have rolled right past unbelievably awesome displays of nature without so much as stopping or taking a single photo. Whatever you've seen in my videos so far, <laughs> it's not even half of what this state has to offer. I do occasionally just turn my chin-mounted GoPro on because that 
takes the least amount of effort. I, all I have to do is push a button and keep riding. But, you know, with this big fisheye lens, the super view, uh, it doesn't do it justice. Okay there, dude. So anyways, the lesson there is skip the early vistas so that I can have the time and energy to capture the really impressive stuff. I also think that uh, this trip is unique as far as my motorcycle road trips go because I wouldn't normally be making one video out of every single day of the trip. I think on a, you know, a four or five day trip like this one, I'd be much more likely to just make one video out, out of the whole thing and therefore I would be filming much less uh, pervasively throughout each day. The other big thing I learned about motorcycle touring this weekend is the importance of rest. Now my travel days were two to three hundred miles in length and for me generally, especially on this bike, I would say that that's about my limit before it starts being less fun. If I'm covering more than 300 miles in a day, today for example, uh, it's for the sake of practicality, not because I'm enjoying it and just want to ride more that day. I would say about 250 miles a day is my sweet spot if I'm riding at the pace I enjoy and allowing time to stop. But anyways, I found that after the third consecutive day of riding what is for me the maximum fun distance, I was just beat. I hadn't been getting much sleep. Um, you know, I would get into these places around 7 p.m. And by the time I had gotten dinner somewhere and then offloaded and organized all the files from my cameras, it would be like 11 p.m. And then I would take a shower and go to bed and try to get up as early as I could, like, you know, 6 o'clock. But that meant that every day I was getting more and more behind on sleep while also using up basically all of the energy I had each day. So by that fourth day yesterday, I was absolutely beat. And I slept in, but honestly, it wasn't enough. I think I should have taken a day of rest on the third day. So two heavy days of riding, one chill day, and then two heavy days of riding. And if I were to take a much longer trip, then I would hope to repeat that pattern. Now that's all operating under the assumption that I'm moving through the land as fast as I can. I've basically spent one night in each place I go, and that's normal for me on motorcycle trips. And the only reason for that is money. I'm always on a budget when I'm planning a trip like this, and I just can't be paying for all these consecutive nights in hotels and Airbnbs. I know you're about to suggest moto camping. Um, I'm open to that. I've just never tried it or done the research on it or anything. But another reason that I wish I had given myself a layover on the third day instead of the fourth is because I loved the town of Silverton. I really wish I had spent another night there. That town feels very special and a welcome departure from what I'm used to. It's just a place where even doing ordinary things there feels interesting. I will definitely be coming back to that region on future adventures in Colorado. And when I do, I'll make sure that I give myself at least two days in Silverton or, you know, maybe Ore or Lake City or something similar. This time, it definitely felt like I was leaving too soon. So now it's time to answer that all-important question. Is the Triumph Speed Twin a good touring bike? And of course the answer is it depends. When I say it depends, I mean it depends on what kind of trip you want to take, and it also depends on you. There are some people who are perfectly happy to jump on an R6 and ride from coast to coast, or cover 1,000 miles in a day on a 250. And then there are people who aren't willing to so much as ride to the next county over on anything less than a Goldwing. And I would say I'm kind of in the middle. I don't need much in terms of creature comforts and luxury features, nor am I a masochist. On this trip though, it was excellent. And that bodes well for me because this is the kind of trip I like to take on my motorcycles. Something that I love about my Speed Twin is the fact that the features it comes equipped with are all the things that I want in my regular riding and none of the things that I don't need. And that extends to touring as well. I don't need cruise control. I don't need built-in GPS or phone connectivity or, you know, a TFT display or whatever. I don't need massive hard side cases or a giant thick touring seat. I find that over the distances 
that I can cover in a day on the roads that I find the most fun to ride, the Speed Twin is totally comfortable for me. Yeah, my butt hurts at the end of the day, but that's true of almost any motorcycle. I would say it's a maybe a smidge less comfy than my old Street Twin. Uh, the seat is just ever so slightly sportier. I think that the Speed Twin's massive torque contributes to it being a nice tourer. Uh, as the day gets long and I get tired and I feel like riding a little more lazily, it doesn't require me to keep the revs in the power band the whole time. Like I said, it did not rain a single drop on this trip, but I have ridden the Speed Twin in the rain before, and it handles it just fine. It's a controllable, well-composed motorcycle, and the traction control and ABS offer a little bit of peace of mind. The bike also did really well on gas. I've averaged, I don't know if you can see that, 55.7 miles per gallon, which I think is pretty good for a 1200. And that's on regular gas too, not premium. As you know, premium can be hard to find in these more remote areas. I would say that the Speed Twin is as good for touring as any other motorcycle in Triumph's modern classic lineup. It cruises more easily than the Street Twin or the Street Scrambler. It's more comfortable than any of the Thruxtons. Mm, you know, the T120 might actually have it beat but also, the T120 is a little bit less fun than this bike. And funness is as important a quality for touring as it is for any other kind of riding you can do. The only one that might have a leg up on it is the Scrambler 1200, which would offer just a little more versatility in terms of the kinds of roads you can ride on. Although I will say, I've done some light, soft roading on the Speed Twin, and it has not complained. Hey gang, at the time that I originally recorded this video, I hadn't done much freeway riding with the Speed Twin, which I know is something some viewers will want to hear about. Now, my personal touring style involves avoiding freeways as much as humanly possible because riding in a straight line on the highway is not fun. That said, I do still find myself jumping on the freeway on those occasions where having fun is not as important as covering ground as efficiently as possible. For example, right after I finished filming this video, I jumped on I-70 for about 120 miles just so that I could make it back to Longmont by nightfall. A month or so later, I rode the Speed Twin from DC to New York and back, all on I-95. Both experiences were quite okay. I got where I was going without any issues and in relative comfort. This bike just does not run out of torque. You've got instant passing power even in 70 mile an hour traffic. That big twin motor can get a bit vibey at higher speeds, and I find that after about an hour on the freeway, my feet have gone numb, thanks in part to the all metal foot pegs. I often find myself reaching for a non-existent 7th gear to keep the revs to a reasonable level. I'd be tempted to look into a plus one front sprocket if I thought I'd be slogging it on the highway more often. I also find that this bike gets blown around by crosswinds pretty easily, which is surprising to me given that it's a pretty small machine and has a hole in the center. Not much you can do about that besides just tucking in. Oh, and one last thing I should mention, if you're planning on buying a Speed Twin and riding it on the freeway a lot, expect the stock Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3 tires to square off in a hurry. Anyways, back to the video. Now the last thing we should talk about is luggage, because a touring bike is only as good as its luggage solution. Now I went into some detail yesterday about the bags that I use and what I carry in them when I travel, but I have a couple updates worth mentioning on the SW Motec Blaze saddlebags that I've been using. Uh, you may have seen that I did a video review of these early on, but at that time I hadn't really done a proper tour in them, so I'm still learning a whole lot about that product over this weekend. I mentioned in my initial review that I think they look okay. Uh, they're kind of a jack of all trades, master of none in the styling department. But at that time, I had never used them with the uh, zip out gussets expanded. Uh, now that I've been using them expanded on this trip to hold all the stuff I needed to bring, I don't think they look okay anymore. I think they look ugly. They just stick out so much and the gussets themselves are not the same rigid material as the rest of the bags and so they sort of droop when they're fully loaded like I have them. You may have noticed in these last few videos that a lot of the b-roll that I got of my bike, I kind of used a more creative shot composition uh, to, <laughs> to exclude the bags from the frame or at least tried to film them directly from the side where you can't see how goofy they look. 
I did run into one issue with these, and that was actually earlier this morning. I went out to put the bracket arms into the receivers to mount the bags, and I found that the one on the left side was falling out, or rather the pillion foot peg that kind of holds the receiver in place was falling out. It turned out that the nut on the other end had walked off at some point. I have no idea how long it was coming loose for. I don't know if it happened yesterday or if it was happening gradually over the last thousand miles. I unfortunately am not very good about my pre-flight checks, but I'm not sure I would have caught it even if I were. So at first I zip tied it all together thinking that might get me home. But what I ended up doing was riding to Ace Hardware to get a replacement bolt for the other end. I looked up on Bike Bandit the dimensions of that bolt, and sure enough, I was able to find one in the correct size. The people at Ace Hardware just gave it to me for free. The price would have been 59 cents, and by my math, that equates to about 10 miles worth of gas on this motorcycle. And 10 miles worth of gas is more than enough to account for, say, my ride up Loveland Pass on Thursday, which was an incredible experience. So, thank you, Ace Hardware lady. I have no way of knowing if that is the result of a fault in the design of the SW Motec brackets. I do think I have these bags loaded pretty close to their weight limit, which may have been a factor. I'll just keep an eye on it and probably Loctite it. Aside from that, uh, no other issues at all. Wake up. Wake up! Did it dead? Alright guys, I think I ran the battery out on my other GoPro, so it's time for me to wrap this up. These past five days, this little trip within a trip, I'll never forget this. I did not know that places like this are real. I mean, look. Look at this. It's, it's out of a fantasy. And not only that it exists, but that people have built these incredible roads by which we now get to experience it. I just, I feel really, really lucky. I hope that those of you who have followed along have enjoyed this trip. I learned a lot out here, both about motorcycling and about myself as a motorcyclist and as an adventurer in general. I think I'm coming away from this seeing that a lot more fantastic things are within my reach than I would have thought. Well, anyways, if you enjoyed this video or learned anything from it, then I hope you'll check out my other videos about riding the Triumph Speed Twin here in Colorado. And if you want to see more of that content in the future, then you should subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'll be leaving Colorado to go back home to DC in a couple weeks, but there's a lot more to get filmed while I'm here, and you'll be seeing Colorado videos for a while yet after I leave. Perhaps by the time they're done, I'll be getting ready for my next big adventure. You'll just have to stay tuned and find out. Anyways, like I always say, Ride safe, and I'll see you back here for the next video. Thank you for watching.